Moving forward, I'm going to enable MRA. And if you're like me, your first time coming around, you're going to say, well, I put the license on there. What do you mean you have to enable it? Because I figured that the license alone and checking the box earlier on as a service was me enabling MRA. But really, you just enabled the option for enabling MRA. We'll go under configuration, unified communications configuration. I'll do that over here as well. I'm going to wait to set it over here on the C. I want to do it on the E first, just because on the C, there's going to be a whole lot of uh, more options that we have to do once we set it to mobile and remote access. Here on the E, we'll set it to mobile and remote access. I'm not going to change anything else here. I'm just going to click save. And it lets us know that there are no unified communications traversal zones configured. I'm going to configure those here in just a moment. First, I'm going to do the Expressway C MRA setup. On the Expressway C side, we'll set it to mobile and remote access, and you'll see a huge drop down menu here. I'm not doing SSO, so I'll turn this off, but I am going to do authorized by user credential, so I'll set that to on. I'm not doing any of these other settings. Again, um, you know, you may want to look at all this different stuff in a production environment, but this video series is specifically for a home lab environment. Therefore, I'm just doing the bare minimum to be able to log into Jabber on my cell phone outside of my home environment. Now I'm going to bring the Expressway C over to be on the same page as my Expressway E. The way that I did that was by going to Configuration, Zones, and then clicking on Zones again. We'll click on New. And over here I'll click on the Configure a Unified Communications Traversal Zone. I'm not going to do anything on the Expressway C side yet because I want to do some settings on the Expressway E that are necessary for me to be able to set up the, the zone on the Expressway C side. I'm going to set this up as a UC Traversal is what the name I'm going to give it. And the same over here, UC Traversal. For the type, Unified Communications Traversal. Over here, Unified Communications Traversal. Now, as you can see here, this is asking me for the connection credentials, the username and password. Whereas over on the left hand side where I have my Expressway E, it's asking me to add or edit local authentication database. I'm going to add new and I'm going to name this E hyphen C hyphen int. I'll set the password to something simple and we'll create the credential. I don't want to save that. Let's go ahead and close out this pop-up. Now I'll put in here username e hyphen c int. I'll copy that out and put it in the Expressway C side as well. Now I got to put the password. Something else that we want to do on the Expressway C is have the same port for SIP. The default is 7001. I have no reason to change it, so I'm going to leave it at 7001. The next thing I want to enter is on the Expressway E, the TLS Verify subject name. If I were doing a cluster of Expressway C's, I would need to put in the cluster name here. I'm only doing a single Expressway C, so I have to put in the, uh, the field that's in the CN, the subject CN of the certificate for the Expressway C. We can get that by hopping into the Expressway C server certificate. We can see that it's issued to this server, but we'll go over to the details and we'll click on subject and we'll look at the CN field. I'll copy this out. Control C. We'll also open up the E certificate because I'm going to need that for something on the C a little bit later. Let's go ahead and minimize that. We'll plug in the Expressway C here. Now we can scroll down to the bottom and say create zone. Let's pull out this Expressway E's subject uh, CN. Control C, hit OK. Now we'll scroll down here to the Peer 1 address and I'll plug that in. Something important is that when you're internal, you want to be able to do an NS lookup against that Expressway E and get the internal interface, but you also want to be able to do an NS lookup against that IP address 
and get the expressway e resolved that way as well you need to have the pointer address and the reason why you need to have that pointer is because reverse xmpp traffic outbound there's a, a caveat around this and if you don't have that pointer in the dns you're going to have some problems with that outbound xmpp traffic since we're good over here with the NS lookup for the fully qualified domain name resolving properly and the NS lookup for the IP address resolving properly. I'll go back over to the Expressway C and click create zone. Next on the Expressway C, I'm going to go under configurations, domains. I'm going to add new. I'll put in my domain here. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be registering any devices to my Expressway, so I'm going to turn this off. I am going to do registrations and provisionings on the CUCM. So I'll turn that on. I do want IMP services, so I'll turn that on. I'm not going to be doing any federation between companies, myself and, and, and any other company or any other person who has their home lab. So I'll leave this to off. But if I did want to do XMPP federation, I'd have to set that to on. Now we'll click create domain and you can see that it's created here. I'm now going to add my unified communication servers such as CUCM, IMP, Unity Connection to my Expressway C. To do so, we go under Configuration, Unified Communications. I'm going to do Unified CM Servers. We'll say Add. I'll add in my publisher here, hqcucmpub.pknane.com. And then we have to give it a username to authenticate against the CUCM. This username needs to have Axel credentials. So this one does have Axel permission. It's my admin account. I'm going to turn TLS verify mode to off because my, my CUCM, my unity connection and my IMM presence are using their self-signed certificates. If I wanted to be able to use TLS verify mode, I could sign the certificates on my, my CUCM, IMP and CUC using my windows server certificate authority. So we'll add address and we'll wait to see what the notification says as to whether or not it was added successfully or not. It was connection success. That's great. So now we'll add our I am in present server. We'll click add. Select the HQ IMP pub. We'll add admin. And we'll click add address. Oh, I forgot to turn TLS verify mode to off. As you can see, I got an error there. This time it was successful. Then down here, we'll click Unity Connection Servers. Click Add again. From here, we'll select the HQ CUC pub. And I need to select off, add address. We'll wait to see what the status says. Everything was successful with that one. Now I'll move into configuration protocols SIP. I'll do the same on the Expressway C, configuration protocols SIP. Since the E is still loading up, we'll do the configurations on the C first. We'll turn SIP mode to on and TCP mode will turn to on as well. But I'm not, I'm not going to change any of the ports. I'm just going to click save. On the Expressway E side, we will also change the SIP mode to on However, I'm going to leave the TCP mode to off. We want the TLS mode on, which is the default, so we're not going to mess with that. We'll just scroll down and click save. Now at this point, everything is saved and you can see that we no longer have the alarms that were up here. Now, if we go under status, unified communication status, I'll do that on the C as well, status, unified communication status. When this loads up, there shouldn't be anything red on the screen here. If there is anything red on the screen here, then that means something's configured wrong or something's broken. And you need to go in and, and investigate what that problem is and get it resolved. Now the E is loaded here and we can see that there's nothing red on either side. So everything up to this point is good. I'm going to end this video here and I'll talk about making the Expressway E externally reachable in the next video, which will also be the final video for this series. With that said, I'll see you in the next video.